for discussion a little later on, but uh, this is a spot of energy that's adjacent to uh, the left side of, of the A ring. Okay, now that slide is intentionally dark because that's the way uh, it, was, it was made in the first place. Um, it's a little too dark here though. Um, yeah, there we go. Now in looking at this dark slide, what I noticed was that I could follow the ring around on the top side, but down at the bottom, <laughs> I was unable to do it. Uh, you see the rings are, are labeled here. Um, now, there's a luminous source here, and that's the luminous source I pointed out that's on the front cover of the book. It's on, on the left side. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now, I've labeled one and two here, and we'll discuss these things in order. And you'll find that the, down here, it was impossible to find the ring because it was not there. This is a, a depiction of, of the situation, and this is sort of a, a picture of, uh, of size. The various rings are labeled on the left, and um, you see the 10 Earth diameters approximately, or the diameter of Saturn, and that the width of the, the total width of the ring system on, on one side is like six uh, Earth diameters long. So that makes a, a total width of the system 22 Earth diameters, and that, that's a well of a large distance. <coughs> now the other thing about this picture is that when the ring is cut off across the uh, Cassini division there, uh, you get a large length for um, whatever is across there. And, uh, and that, I have two vertical lines coming down, and so for that much of the ring is shown there, that's two and a half Earth diameters. So you begin to get a feel for the length of an object that might be there. <coughs> now, there we go. You see, I've labeled the B ring and this luminous source. That's the one on the left and it's the one on the book cover. And, and uh, that thing is larger in diameter than our moon. So that's a big chunk of energy to be sitting out there besides the ring. Now, when I first discovered that the ring was cut off, I was actually mystified. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the mystery came from realizing that the ring was incomplete circularly. But I finally, it dawned on me that, hey, you know, this ring is not there radially either because uh, typically the ring width for the A ring should be something like four, uh, four times the, the width of the Cassini division. And here we find that we're lucky if we get maybe two, something of that nature. Well, that helped a lot because um, now you know all of the A ring is not there in addition to uh, the ring not being completely circular. And uh, so you know that something is going on. Good, great, yeah. No. They got me lined up so that when I talk about these pictures, 
that it sounds much better, okay? So we gotta thank our staff here. They're really right on the ball. I, I've been impressed with all their capabilities. Um, now, this long optic that's in here um, is what terminates the ring. And when you examine it more in detail, you find that there's a little exhaust there and a little down in here. And uh, here's a light source below it. And uh, then there are some streamers that form here, this, these white things I call the streamers, and they, they go up into the ring. And uh, you can see that there's a body of some sort there. And so, whoa, now I understand how the rings are made in as much as there is nothing in the way of a ring beyond the end of the cylindrical body. Um, and uh, that nails it down, that there's nothing further out other than what's, uh, what you see uh, portrayed by the length of the, of the body. Now, what I tried to do later on was to identify characteristics to say, well, what kind of body? Um, and that turned out to be electrical. And so you, now you have a heads up view of, of how that's going. Now, this slide I have presented because uh, there has been a gent that has made up a story about this figure here, which I just showed you, that he did not believe that what I had was the right picture, but he submitted that this one was correct. Well, I've put some numbers up here. The first one here is one that says there's a light below the nose. You see, there's no light below this nose, and that wipes him out right there. Um, here, is uh, texture of the A-ring. The texture of that looks different than this. And um, so he's off base on that. They don't look right in the rings. And for this one, there's a little streamer up in here. It's very hard to see in this image. But this one has a big, broad image uh, coming here. You can see some of these uh, pinch plasma things going up there. So in addition, this one has some blue uh, appearance down here. Uh, the, the other one does not. So the, the fellow was really off base. And uh, the reason he got off base was that he did not understand that um, there's several levels of data processing. He had the zero level of data processing. He had raw information. That raw information is corrected to uh, level one, and then there's level two that has only uh, pictures that are designed for land, where you take a look at a picture and, and adjust it so uh, it, it lines up with uh, longitudinal lines and that kind of thing. So he mistook himself with regard to, uh, to the characteristic of, of the images. Now he asserted that there were four images that were stacked on top of one another to create um, the colored image that you see there for, for, uh, for my picture. Well, it turns out that uh, when you get the process data, why there are extensions on the rings that if you line them up uh, for color purposes, these things would stick out and you would know it. And uh, that's the other thing that I pointed out. And so his case fails miserably. And uh, so I present this here because uh, he's been all over the net with it. And, and But he, he's just a book salesman and he really doesn't have the talent to, to know what he's doing. Okay, now we're going to the other side. And most everything's labeled there for you that you can see. Uh, you're acquainted now with the A ring and the B ring, the Cassini division, and that luminous source. Now here, the luminous source doesn't look orange because this image 
is uh, one that um, is highly exposed in order to bring out these various features. But you can see a little bit of exhaust there for uh, the longitudinal object, and you can see body emissions that go up into the ring. And uh, the thing I wanted to talk to you about was that there is a toroid on a, on a curved arm that goes up from down in here. And um, around a conductor carrying electricity, uh, you could have material gather as a toroid. And, um, and that's because of the way the magnetic field exists around the conductor. Now, this is supposed to be an example of a conductor. It's a little blanked out. Uh, it's a little overexposed. There we go. There we go. Um, I've taken a plane just across the conductor at right angles and given you the direction of the current flow. And under that setup, uh, you, you get a concentric magnetic field around that conductor. And so you can think of that plane as being one element of a toroid, which is a really a donut-shaped object. And so a number of, of little spaces to each side of this uh, would contribute to making a donut shape or a toroid. Uh, and uh, a number of those could be made all, all along the conductor. So now you're beginning to see that uh, it has some electromagnetic characteristics. Okay, we're back to this, and why we are going back to this is that um, you see these streamers come up in here. Well, there's other action in here, and you can vaguely see it right here that go back. Uh, when uh, streamers cross each other at right angles, you know darn well that there is an electrical field there. And I drew this to bring out that idea that I saw in those rings, so it, it's clear as to what I'm talking about. The streamers come up from down below and uh, like that, and then there's some streamers on the body that flow aft, and they intersect essentially at right angles, and that tells you that that field is an electrical field. Otherwise, uh, they would not intersect at right angles. So now you begin to see it's electromagnetic in character. And uh, just from these two points, um, I feel that we can name these vehicles EMVs, electromagnetic vehicles, uh, because it does describe uh, essentially the, the characteristics that they possess. Uh, I said the title of the slide there is orthogonality of the streamers. Well, that word means perpendicularity, so it's the same thing. Now here is a flow field around a cylinder. Now what I want you to do is to envision that on the, on the top